council in India. All the central provincial branches, various councils, organizations, and wonderful teacher participants. Namaskar and good afternoon. Uh, my sound is echoing, actually. I don't know what's the option with this. I would like to welcome you all into this webinar sessions on basic of remote delivery using online meeting, meeting platforms with the theme of Internet ICT, organized by this council and led. Without wasting time, allow me to introduce today's learning dynamic facilitator. Uh, Dr. Suman Laudari is a educational designer and research fellow at the University of Technology, Sydney, Australia. He specializes in digital competencies of teachers and academics. He designs and delivers evidence resources and training to promote student centered approaches to teaching with. His research interests include TPSCTA, digital leadership in educational context, instructional design, and digital experiences in higher education. Okay, I'll introduce uh, Kamini Paniza. She's an academic manager based in West India and has worked with the British Council for more than 15 years. Ms. Kamini has extensive teaching and planning experience and has worked in India and overseas. She has the experience of working a number of large scale government projects, in schools, higher education, and conflict of areas to build resilience during in the sector. Ms. Adeja gained a number of Qualifications, including the camera in teaching English to speakers of other languages. Delta, masters in leadership and management from Open University, UK, and Cambridge certificate in teaching to speakers of other languages. She has also a moderated certificate course for the British Council and is a self tutor. Ms. Tanez has presented at many conferences, including K17. And take 15 and I'll teach 2016, ATFL 2013, ATFL 2012, and deliver a number of webinars to internal and external audience. Miss Tanya loves to write with ink pen and is a collector of pencils and notebooks. Let us welcome them. Now, over to you, Dr. Lager and Miss Tanya. All the best. Thank you. Thank you um, for the introduction. And uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, before I start, uh, can I please request you to turn off your video and your uh, um, audio, your mics. You can unmute yourselves when you'd like to speak. And uh, we are sharing the screen now. So there was nothing on the screen earlier. OK, so thank you for coming. And we really appreciate your support uh, and we greatly enjoy interacting with you in this uh, you know webinar series um, uh, Suman, Suman, can you go on to the next slide please so today the session is uh, you know going to be focusing on using online platforms for teaching and <clears throat> or conducting meetings can I please request people to mute themselves so that uh, everybody can hear clearly? So the recording of the webinar will be available to you tomorrow. It will be on the website, British Council Nepal website. You will also receive a certificate after the webinar is over. You will have to type your name and it is certainly something you should add to your continuing professional development portfolio. In addition to that, we will be sharing a, a link which will be feedback for this webinar 
and some uh, analysis, further analysis of your needs. So do spare five minutes to complete that. That would really, really help us in deciding what webinars should we do going forward because they have to be based on your needs. Moving on to the next slide, uh, some housekeeping rules. Please, I stress again, keep yourself on mute. Uh, only unmute yourselves if you want to share. Um, and the video should be turned off. You still will be able to see everything. You can turn off your camera only when you have to speak. You can use the chat box, meeting chat. You can see to type in your comments and questions, and we will be addressing these towards the end of the session. And of course, you can raise your hand uh, using the tab on the toolbar that you see in case you want to say something. Um, uh, now, in this session, the main aims of this session include that we'd be, uh, next slide please, uh, we'll look at various platforms, video conferencing platforms that are there for us to choose from because of COVID-19, there's a lot out there. So we'll be looking at what is available. And after all, it is you who decides which one works best for you. Then we'll be exploring features of Zoom and Teams, Microsoft Teams. We are at the moment on Microsoft Teams, but we, go, we are going to look at what each of these platform uh, offer. And most importantly, at the end, we look at some security measures that are at play when we invite people for a meeting or an online lesson. So that's uh, what we are going to do to the, today. I hand over to my colleague Suman, <coughs> who has an exciting poll for you. Suman? <clears throat> Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. All right, okay, good. Um, all right, thank you, Kamini, for that introduction. So, we'd like to begin this session, you know, uh, by, um, I mean, we'd like you to answer some uh, couple of questions. Um, and the question is, um, this. So the question is, which video conferencing platforms are you aware of? Um, you can answer this question by going into a website, um, open up your browser on your computer and type slido.com and key in this code J461 and you should be able to answer this question. Um, you know, so we have a list of uh, video conferencing platforms. Um, just in case you are not able to access Slido. Can you maybe answer, type your you know, answer in the chat box? So we see that somebody's already answered it. Uh, so they are aware of Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, and MS Teams. Uh, so once again, the instruction: go to Slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, and key in this code. J461 and you should be able to answer. As you can see, we already have three people who, who you know who are you know responding. Four people have responded so far. And we can see that Zoom and Google Meet are the most popular tools. And some people are also are also aware of Skype. Others are also aware of MS Teams and I can see that some people also have used Cisco WebEx, which is very interesting. I'm, you know, I've not seen many people using Cisco. It's not as popular as Zoom, I would say. And Adobe Connect is also there, but um, you know, not as popular as um, other other video conferencing platforms. So we can see that in the chat we have a few responses. So a lot of um, answers. So Zoom, Google Meet, Skype, and Team Apps. Uh, team apps got to know via this session. Um, it's good to know that you know you're learning things as you're also you know participating in the um, 
webinar. Um, can we request you to mute your mic, please? Uh, you know, it disturbs the entire session. You know, there are more than 100 people and everyone can hear you when you are not uh, talking about uh, related to what we are asking you to discuss. So uh, Zoom is the most popular platform, as you can see in the survey results. Um, Google Meet is the other uh, most popular platform, followed by Skype and MS Teams. And some people have also used Adobe Connect and Cisco Webex. Right, OK. Um, we have 49 people. I think um, we can go on to the next slide. Um, so the next slide is, sorry, next question is, can you tell us which ones of these platforms you've used for teaching and learning? So if you've used Zoom, again, go to slido.com. Uh, you should be actually able to see the you know, question um, in the browser that you're using. So we've already had, see, we, we've got two responses. So both of them have used Zoom. So we've got four responses. Because Zoom's getting more hit, you know, it's big, grown bigger in size as compared to other, you know, words. So Zoom and Meet, Meet, um, Google Meet. Uh, I think uh, Google is Google Meet, I suppose. Uh, Zoom and Meet, uh, 37 responses, which is pretty impressive. Um, if you can't access Slido, can we ask can we ask you to respond via chat? So we see that a lot of people have used Zoom. Um, that's what we were, you know, uh, assuming both I and Kamini. And also there are people who have used Google Google Meet, uh, which is good to know. Um, yeah, so we have uh, some people who have used Microsoft Teams. Uh, others have used Zoom, um, um, Classroom. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what Classroom is. Um, Messenger, yes. Uh, we didn't have that in the list, but it's good to know that you're using Messenger. Um, obviously, you need to use you know what works best for you. Uh, Zoom and Zoom and Meet, Microsoft Classroom. Um, I would love to know which particular plat you know platform you've used in Microsoft Classroom. Is it Classroom Notebook or OneNote? Um, yeah. And Google Meet, Zoom and Meetings, uh, da, 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 Google Classroom, Meet. I think that sort of gives us, uh, Kamini, you know, um, uh, tells us that Zoom is the most popular, followed by uh, Meet, and people have also used, you know, other, other platforms that work best for you. So we'll stop the poll here, and we'll go to the next uh, slide, and Kamini will quickly talk about it. Kamini, over to you. Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah, thanks for uh, you know pitching in that quickly. Um, the most popular one certainly was Zoom, hands down, because it's quite friendly and accessible. So on the on the slide, you can see there's a comparison as far as what features uh, you know do both of these platforms present as a teacher or somebody who's uh, having a lot of meetings. So a lot of features are common. The first glaring difference is the capacity. Uh, Zoom uh, can go up to 300, uh, a paid license. And I mean, it can go up to 300, but you can upgrade it to 1,000 uh, people. Uh, but that has to be a licensed platform. Unlike Zoom, Teams just has a capacity of 250 participants. Uh, another thing is Teams is more of a collaboration tool. It works best for organizations, schools, where teachers can come together, employees can come to, together and collaborate. It also uh, works as a place for saving files, having calls, having meetings, uh, creating a wiki. So it, it has a slightly different purpose. I mean, has an added feature or has is more multi-purpose than Zoom. Of course, both of these have chatting options, you can join both audio, video, screen sharing, the whiteboard. Uh, the big difference is Teams at the moment does not have breakout rooms, which is what makes Zoom really stand out because it brings in that interactivity in the classroom that we so want, which mirrors the face-to-face -face 
classroom. In terms of the security measure, uh, Zoom has uh, a waiting room option. Unlike Teams, while you were people were joining, you were waiting in the lobby. But we, we are going to talk a little bit more about security measures that can be put into place to ensure that no unknown person comes into your meeting or your classroom, just like we wouldn't have that in a face to face classroom. But the, the platform you should use should be the one that works best for your needs. We are not saying this is better or that is better. We are saying this is what exists. Over to you, Suman. Now we're going to look at Zoom in a little more detail. Right. Uh, thank you, Kamini, for that you know, uh, quick um, you know, comparison between Teams and Zoom. So um, we've, you know, we sent out a survey a um, couple of days back, uh, requesting you to uh, rate, uh, you know, requesting you to rate your confidence in using different features in Zoom. Because, um, you know, in in this webinar, we uh, in particular wanted to talk about uh, how to use different features of Zoom and, you know, how to use how to use it securely uh, for classroom purpose, uh, you know, for teaching and learning purposes. So uh, the survey results has, uh, you know come back uh, we have around you know uh, six, uh, 50 plus people and the survey tells that you know we have a high rating uh, in question number two which is about you know scheduling meeting and a high rating for uh, question number one so how one's uh, you know one of them is scheduling meeting the other one is uh, setting up a recurring meeting so uh, it's good to know that uh, there are people you know who I mean, you already know, at least, you know, um, some of you already know, because right now we have around 190 people, but it's only around 60 people, you know, that responded. But we could see a sort of a, um, you know, consistent, uh, consistent rating to all the features. Uh, so we listed, you know, both coming in. I had a good um, a brief uh, discussion and we listed, uh, we identified 15 features and uh, we put them in the survey and it tells that um, at least, Many of you know how to set up meetings and how to edit meetings. But there are other people who also asked, you know, uh, if we could discuss how to edit meetings. So this was about the you know, high rating. So when it comes to uh, the other side, you know, low rating one to two, uh, we've been told, you know, through the survey that people would like to know about. So these are the two questions that were consistently rated low. And these questions were about using um, breakout rooms and moving between different breakout rooms, controlling breakout rooms during a meeting. So what we're going to do is now, um, you know, because your survey told us, you know, what to talk about. So we'll particularly focus about, you know, what you requested us to talk about, you know, during this um, Zoom session, uh, sorry, during this webinar. But um, we'll also be, uh, we'll, we'll have some time at the end for you to, you know, sorry, uh, for you to ask any questions that you may have. And if we know the answers, you know, if these are not highly technical related to your particular context, we'll be happy to answer them as well. Right. So, um, you know, uh, if you already don't have it, uh, because uh, the earlier poll uh, told us that uh, many of you use Zoom and you know how to use it. Um, if you already don't have it, uh, if you want to run a successful meeting, you need to download a Zoom client app. So uh, make sure that you go to zoom.us slash download and download it from there. Uh, there are other, you know, fake Zoom apps. If you downloaded those, then, you know, uh, they could be, uh, they could lead to, you know, mal uh, your computer malfunctioning because uh, they could be spy Spywares, they could be malwares, they could be viruses. So download Zoom client app from zoom.us. Look, you know, I'm not trying to promote Zoom, but what I'm trying to do is I'm just telling you where the app is located. And if you're using mobile phone, Zoom app is available via Play Store or App Store. Right. Um, so I'll talk about, you know, I'll show you Zoom app later. So that was the reason why I wanted to talk about, you know, right in the beginning of uh, my presentation. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll have to, you know, uh, exit this slide and go to a different uh, browser where I'll open my Zoom account and I'll uh, show you how to, you know, uh, I'll walk you through basic and advanced settings, how to set up a meeting, how to set up a recurring meeting and edit an, edit an existing meeting and some of the features within that, you know, uh, meeting setup, which will help you enhance your security measures in Zoom. 
For example, yesterday, um, I think um, this morning somebody shared a post with me, you know, about a Zoom security breach. Uh, it's, you know, I mean, it was very interesting. It was a women's group, around 250 people, you know, working in forestry. You know, they had a Zoom session, so somebody managed to get into the session and play pornographic video. So, you know, that tells that many people are still not aware of the security, you know, security features within Zoom. So we'll, we'll talk about those and maybe, you know, after this season, session, you'll feel more confident about using Zoom, at, you know, more securely in your teaching and learning. Right. So what I'll do is I'll have to go to um, Zoom. So I'm, I've already logged in. Uh, so this is my Zoom account. Uh, as you can see, it's a test account, John Test, uh, you know, uh, because I you, use it for other purposes. So it's just a test account and random name. Um, if you logged into Zoom now, these are different notices that Zoom, you know, has pushed through for all the account holders. So uh, these notices basically tell you that you need to, uh, you know, update your uh, Zoom application if you haven't done so. Uh, as of, you know, as of this afternoon, uh, as I know it, uh, uh, Zoom runs, I mean, I think they've released 5.3 uh, yesterday. So I've already got it updated. So update it because uh, 5.3 has more secure, um, more security functions. In fact, you know, from 5 onwards, they have more security in you know, functions, and I'll talk 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 through those in a while. So what happens is once you log in, I could actually log out and show you, you know, what it looks like. So once you go to zoom.us, this is what it looks like. You can, you know, uh, sign up. It's free. So if you click on sign up, you can actually sign up into Zoom using your Google account or Facebook. So because I already have a Zoom account, I'll sign in. So this is my account uh, and this is the you know Zoom web portal and uh, this is the sort of landing page and you can see upcoming meetings, previous meetings. So and Suman, uh, we've lost your screen. We can't see anything. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, let me share that screen again, share. Um, Thank you, Kamini, for raising that up. Can you see it now? Yes. But good. we could see it properly before also. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. good. Right. Okay, so, um, you know, all you want to check is, you want to go and check your profile, you know, make sure that you have a, your photo. So if you are not using video, your student know, you know, it's your photo. So try to upload your professional photo. Uh, that's an advice that I would like to give. Uh, if it's a you know um, uh, basic account, uh, you'll see that your account is basic from here. Uh, you know, so this is your basic account, and you can have hundred people, and this is your email. So my now th this is again related to security. Never ever use personal meeting ID. So just in case somebody's managed to you know have you know grab your personal meeting ID and you use personal meeting ID. What happens is the hacker or the person, whoever it is, you know, who loves Zoom bombing, can in come into your meeting if they are not properly, you know, set up. So um, I'll show you how to how not to use your uh, personal meeting ID. So you know, to set up your meeting, you basically go to schedule a meeting um, and write your meeting. So my meeting. You can write description. For example, if it's for your English teaching class, you can tell your students that. We are going to discuss, you know, uh, grammar tomorrow, you know, between this period of time and set up your time, um, you know, duration. So what time you'd like to start your class. And after that, make sure that you choose a.m. or p.m. Uh, you can choose the hours. So this is for hours and this is for minutes. So you have option for 15, 30, 45. But, uh, you know, you can actually make it so so you can actually decide, you know, how long your meeting will go. Um, and. So this is where you make your meeting recurring. So if you want to make a meet, meeting recurring, press here, and then it, it gives you options for you know how often you would like to uh, you would like this meeting to be repeated. So right now the default fun, you know option is daily and repeat every day. So if it's not every day, if you click on the drop down you know function, uh, you see that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So repeat every seven days. So this means you know it it gets repeated every week. So you know these are nice functions in zoom so the only thing that you might want to be careful of is this time zone time zone gmt make sure that it's set up to your location so if you are based in india it has to be india time and if you're based in you know nepal it has to be uh, Kathmandu standard time or nepal standard time right 
Okay. Um, and always, you know, set up a, a meeting password. So if you are using a basic um, account, uh, sometimes it can get locked. So this is my meeting password as of now. Uh, you know, I would like to um, keep my video off when I start my meeting. I can always toggle that video, you know, icon to switch it on and off. And this is a very important feature. Uh, so which is, you know, um, this meeting option. So enable join before host and never do that. By default, it's enabled, so toggle it off. Uh, mute participants upon entry because then it makes your room less chaotic. Um, you know, earlier we had to repeat both Kamini and I had to repeat, you know, uh, uh, and re repeatedly uh, request you to mute your microphone because that can happen if you're teaching, you know, uh, grade seven students. They they basically don't. Uh, many of them don't know the you know netiquette. So it's good to, you know, have this control up to yourself and you can always go back and you know in, in, change this uh, uh, if, if you if you want and enable waiting room so what it does is earlier if you remember Kamini was talking about the security function um, when you enable waiting room nobody can actually come into the meeting room without you know you permitting them to come into the uh, come into the meeting so that sort of gives you one layer of control you know who comes to the meeting and who doesn't and uh, so this is about recording the meeting automatically on the local computer. So if you'd like to record your meetings on the local computer, toggle it on so that you know or you know enable it so the meetings get recorded. But um, it's a good practice to Kamini will talk about it later. But you know um, just to reinforce the message, it's a good practice to inform your students that the meeting is being recorded. Uh, you know it's it's just to be on safe side. You know it's a it's an ethical practice. Now, so this is about uh, meeting setups. Let's say I've set up a meeting. Now, how do I edit a meeting? Say, if the timing is wrong, um, you know, how do I edit the meeting? So what happens is you log into the uh, Zoom web portal. Uh, you see that uh, by default, this is the land, you know, this is the landing page. Uh, it always starts with, I mean, the landing page is about scheduling a meeting. So if you click on my meetings, you can see all the upcoming meetings previous meetings and meeting template. Because I set up that meeting, see here, uh, as a recurring meeting, and I wanted the system to repeat it every seven days, every week. So I have these recurring meetings here. Now, look, you know, I don't want this to be recurring meeting. This was a mistake. So how do I edit? I click on the meeting topic, and I click here, edit this meeting, and it gives me, you know, you get this uh, pop-up window, you know, screen. So it tells you are editing a recurring meeting. Do you want to edit only this meeting or all recurring meetings? So I'll say all recurring meeting. And I'll go and tell the system that I don't want it to be a recurring meeting. So what I do is I disable it and I go and save it. So again, once again, I've disabled enable join before host. So my students can't come to the class before I did, but the waiting room is enabled and recording is also enabled. Obviously I can, you know, um, mute, uh, sorry, I can stop or I can pause recording when I start the meeting. So I'll save it. So what it does is, now if I go back to my meetings, see all of those repeated, meet, you know, uh, recurring meetings have disappeared now. You don't need to delete them, you know, uh, manually. So this is a good function. The other thing, now I'll spend a couple minutes talking about the security features, uh, you know, some, some features within the settings, uh, which will help you, you know, increase security of your uh, class. So you, if you click on settings, uh, again, you go into your Zoom web, web portal, uh, you know, uh, from the top left corner. So you see your personal, your profile meetings, webinars, it, you know, if it's a basic account or if you haven't purchased, uh, you know, as Kamini was telling earlier, if you don't have an institutional license and you haven't purchased anything for a webinar, a license for a webinar, don't worry about webinars. Go to settings, I go to settings. So once I click on settings, sorry. Um, that's my brother. I just have to uh, quit. So this happens, you know, when you're running a uh, class, and you know, it's common. So go to settings. So again, schedule a meeting in meeting basic, in meeting advanced. So I'll walk you through some functions within uh, in meeting basic. Um, so you see that uh, you can make all of your conversation encrypted. So you can switch it on. This was one question asked in the survey whether you know the conversation and the chat are, chat is encrypted. You can 
you know, enable it. So anything that you discuss in the meeting is encrypted, you know, end to end encryption. So people can't actually, you know, hackers or uh, if somebody manages to get your data or get get your, you know, go back to the system, you know, zoom, uh, zoom back in and get it, say, um, get access to your uh, chat or get access to your recording, they won't be able to access it because it's encrypted. So do you want to allow meeting participants to send messages visible to every participant? So, you know, um, my my uh, personal opinion, I think we differ here. Uh, Kamini's uh, advice is that you disable it, but my advice is you disable private chat so students can't send private chats to each other. So if one of your students says, turns out to be nutty, and he would like to have some fun, they can actually send, you know, uh, abusive messages to people. So if you disable private chat, they can't do that, but keep the chat main chat window on. So what happens is they can actually, you know, send you questions via chat if they can't, you know, if they have anything during the presentation to, you know, ask you. Um, you can auto save chats. These are saved within the folder. Usually they go into the document uh, in a Zoom folder. Uh, these are all, you know, created, you know, uh, by default by system. Um, so. Right now, I think many of you can hear that background noise when somebody joins the meeting, you know, uh, that uh, beep. Um, you can enable that in Zoom, but I personally don't like it. I don't like my class to be disturbed or, you know, uh, or interrupted when I'm running class. So I usually leave it, uh, you know, off, turn it off. File transfer, I switch it off because students can actually, you know, transfer you know, not necessary files. If you enable file transfer, you know what happens? Is students can send pictures, they can send GIF, they can do a whole lot of things. So you leave it off, and if they need to transfer file, tell them to transfer it via email or maybe via chat. Sorry, via you know messenger. If you use uh, messenger to run your class, you can switch it on if you'd like to. You know, give feedback to Zoom. Display end of meeting experience feedback survey. You can switch it on. You know, so that people can give a thumbs up. Uh, always show meeting control bar. So I would like to see meeting control bar when I'm running class so that, you know, in the Zoom app, I'll show you later, uh, you will see that, you know, control bar as in team. So you can switch on, you know, uh, mute or unmute, you know, switch on or switch off your video. So with Zoom windows during screen share, uh, you can do that. Uh, and screen share. So this is another important thing. So I think a couple of weeks back, I was, sorry, somebody who is turned on the, Turn on your mic. Can you please? Uh, All right. Uh, I think um, uh, the organizer muted all. Thank you very much. So this is what I was telling. So I was running a um, we were running a panel session in you know um, I think run by DN DNJC sir in Nelta Province Seven and somebody managed to you know share uh, their screen and it was done for commercial purpose. So they were trying to promote their product. And you obviously don't want that that to happen. So what you do is screen share. Yes, you want to share your screen, but make sure that it's only you. You can always go back during the meeting and enable that all participants of for your screen. Yeah, um, Please unmute all the participants, sir, or ma'am. Right. Okay. Um. And disable desktop screen share yeah. for users. If you'd like to, use, you know, uh, share. Sorry, it's a bit disturbing. Can you please, you know, have that? Be aware that there are, you know, more than 190 people in the room, and they would like to hear some meaningful things. Okay. So, you know, if you don't want your students to dis uh, screen, you know, screen share their screen or share their desktop, switch it off. But I would like to keep it on, but you know I'll make sure that this is host only so that I can always control and keep annotation on, but you can always disable during the meeting. Keep whiteboard on so you can use whiteboard. Remote control, I'll keep it off. Nonverbal feedback, I'll keep it on. So you know, play around. You know, I can't basically go through everything, but I'll switch on a couple of things. So if you're planning to have your students discuss in smaller group, toggle this on, breakout room and allow host to assign participants to breakout room when you know when scheduling meeting so you know enable that and remote support leave it off caps you know so you don't need this virtual background if you'd like to use virtual virtual background you know enable it um, and waiting room so this is the most important 
you know, make sure that your waiting room is enabled. Now, once this has been done, you're pretty much ready, I would say, to run your, you know, Zoom session. Uh, obviously, you need to have other, other, you know, uh, be aware of a few other things uh, during the meeting. But these are the basic uh, settings that I wanted to talk. So what I did was I, I showed you how to do, I walked you through basic and advanced settings, how to set up a meeting, how to set up a recurring meeting, how to edit an existing meeting, and obviously, you know, the security functions for, um, you know, uh, to, to make your Zoom meetings more, more secure. So um, now what I'll do is I'll close this and I'll move to another slide, maybe. Uh, Kamini, can you please can you can you please confirm if you can see my slide? Okay, good. Thank you, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So now what I'll do is, you know, how to use Zoom uh, more effectively in meetings. Look, you know, if you have any questions, please send your questions via chat. Uh, we can't, uh, due to time restrictions, we won't be able to take questions now. We, otherwise, I would, I would have loved to do that. Uh, we'll answer your questions later on. Now what I'll do is I'll use Zoom app uh, and show you a live meeting. And I'll tell you, you know, how you detect source of noise uh, in Zoom, in fact, you know, uh, in, in contrast to... Just Kamini? Full screen. Yep. Full screen. Yeah. Full make screen. it full screen, please. Right. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So what I'll do is I'll open Zoom app and I'll talk about this thing. So detecting source of noise, controlling mute and unmute functions, allowing or restricting, you know, screen shares, sharing, uh, obviously, sorry, a bit of repetition. Uh, please forgive it. Forgive me. Enabling and disabling annotations and sharing using and saving whiteboard. All right. Um, don't worry if you didn't pick that up. I'll, you know, now show it. Uh, can you confirm if you can see my screen, Zoom app screen? Good. Thank you, Narayan sir. Um, yes. Right. So, you know, this is a live meeting. The meeting is going on. Uh, I'm the host of the meeting, and there are two participants, test one and test two. Uh, if you see, you know, uh, what I'll do is I'll probably minimize it a bit uh, so that you can see other things that I want to show. So you know, if you so this is what the Zoom control bar is. Uh, you can see it's on. Un so can you uh, put the toolbar at the top so that uh, because uh, this, the Teams can't the bar top. is ah okay. Sorry, this it can't can go actually. To, okay. But what I'll do is I'll do this. Okay. So you know, so these are different functions. Mute How and do mute. You say what chat Beg your pardon. Chat chat box should be disabled. I think. Um, uh, I did talk about it. I personally like chat box uh, open. Uh, you can obviously disable it from the settings. I did talk about it earlier. You can disable it if you don't want it. Uh, but you know, if I if I'm running class of 35, uh, I won't be able to answer every single student's question. You know, so what I do is I leave chat box on, uh, but I'll take their questions later on. So I tell them I establish some ground rules at the beginning of the session and tell them that ask your questions via chat, I'll look at chat, you know, after the session. So it, it's for that reason, you know, chat can be um, very effective, but I've disabled private chat. So students can't, you know, ch chat with each other's privately, you know, which you can't see. So now if you updated your Zoom to, you know, uh, five or later version, you'll see this security badge here, security icon, participants, chat, screen share, a polling, which is very good, you know, a good another good function in, you know, uh, Zoom recording because meeting can be. Uh, I switch this on. Closed captions, breakout rooms, and reactions. Now, participants. So, you know, um, I'll bring it here. Uh, can you please confirm if you can see my participants' screen? Yes. Good. So, as you can see, there are three participants. Because there are only three participants, and I've you know I put on my gallery view, so you know from the top you can go do gallery view. So if you did gallery view, you can see you know 20 to 30 people in the screen. If your screen resolution is good one, if you have a larger screen, you can see up to 50 people in single screen. You can do that uh, via the you know video settings, which I'll show you in a while. Um, so now say how do you how do you detect the source of noise? See test, test two. two. The mic, the mic is, is you know, moving, you know, moving up, up, and, up down. and down. So, you know, uh, sorry, you know, it's echoing a bit because I'm, you know, these all three participants are myself. I'm, you know, logging in via different um, tools, uh, you know, different devices. 
So say if this person is on mute and um, uh, say they are making a lot of noise. So what you do is you can actually see this mic function, you know, mic icon flicker up and down. And unlike in Teams, in Zoom, the person who is unmute is, you know, visible uh, on top of, you know, those who are, uh, you know, those whose mics are mute. So what I do is I go here and mute them. Plus, if you click on mute all, so this is what I wanted to tell you. See, mute all current and new participants. So what you do is you disable this, allow participants to unmute themselves and mute all. So now what happens is my test one and test two accounts can't unmute themselves. You have to unmute them if they have any questions. So say test two would like to ask a question. Sorry, you know, I'll disappear out of the frame. They can raise a hand. So tell your students that they can raise a hand. So you will see it in the participants, you know, screen that they have raised a hand. You can go and, you know, ask, you know, you can ask them to unmute and you can lower their hand. So this sort of gives you a control of, you know, uh, control, control and this, this helps you see who is making noise in the background. Plus, so if they are making a lot of noise and say, uh, earlier I was telling you a bit of, you know, short story of, you know, another Zoom session where somebody managed to get in and, you know, play pornographic video. So if you know who this person is, you click on more and you can remove them. And if you update it, your Zoom app to 5.3, you can actually report them. So uh, when they receive a lot of reports like that, what Zoom does is Zoom then finds out who the person is and they try to actually, you know, uh, um, uh, block their, you know, uh, access to Zoom. So this is another nice feature and, not, you know, good reason to actually, you know, update your application. So you might ask how you do that. So how you update your Zoom app is, um, I need my another Zoom app on top of this. Uh, can you see my Zoom app? Good. So actually, this is the Zoom application that I was talking about. So you see from on the top right corner, you can see your own profile uh, pic, uh, picture. So if you click on that, so one of the options is check for updates. You know, so I can't, I'm sorry, uh, I can't make it large. Oh, this has disappeared. Um, so this is check for updates, if you see here. So you can click on check for updates. And if your Zoom app is not updated, uh, it will tell you that uh, a new version is available and you can actually update it uh, without having to reinstall a new you know, application. And you can switch to portrait video view and you also have a nice settings which I'll walk you through in a while. So what I'll do is I, there are a, couple, a few more things that are very useful. So again, if you click on participants, so what it does is you see there are there is this more button, invite, mute all and more. So let me see, can you see more here? So if you click on more, you see all of these options. So you can lock meeting. So say there are three people or five people in your class. If everyone's in the meeting, go and lock the meeting. That's the most important thing to do because nobody now can actually come into the meeting. No hacker can actually, you know, hack into your, can, can hack into your, you know, come into your meeting and do Zoom bumpings. So lock the meetings. This is also available via the security functions in the Zoom toolbar. Uh, next to participants on the left hand side or third icon uh, from the left is security. Click on security. So you can see the first option from the top is lock meeting. So enable it. So I've already locked it. So I always do that. Once, you know, as I, once I confirm that all of my participants are in the meeting, I go and lock it. Um, and this security also has more options like enable waiting room. You can enable it, share screen, chat, uh, you can also, you know, disable students' uh, ability to rename themselves. So what you can do is, you know, you can rename themselves, uh, you know, sorry, you can disable rename themselves function so they can't actually go and rename, you know, themselves into Haribangsa Acharya or Madan Krishna Shrestha. I've seen students doing that and unmute themselves. So what I did earlier from, you know, mute all was I disabled unmute function. And if you go to security, this has been reflected here. If I enable it, students can actually unlock themselves. So unmute it and remove participants and re report. Right. So what I did now was I talked about uh, some, um, sorry, I'll go back to my presentation and present. So what I did was I talked about how you detect source of noise. Again, you know, look, uh, look for the mic, you know, which is moving up and down. 
controlling mute on mute, allowing restricting screen share. Sorry, so I just had to say it. So how you actually control screen share is, um, if you go to screen share option, sorry, I'll bring it, try to bring it up. Um, so see, screen share is screen share looks a bit different from others because this is always green in color. Next to screen share, there is this you know up um, arrow showing up. So you click on it, then you see three options here. One participant can share at a time. Multiple participants can share simultaneously. Advanced sharing option. Make sure that it's always one participant can share at a time. Click on advanced sharing option and go to who can share. So it's make sure that's only host. But say if your meeting is already locked and you have students whom you would like you know, um, to share the screen and present, click on all participants. Now students can you know, share their screen. And even when your students are sharing the screen, you can actually always start your own screen share and control that. You know, if you started your screen share, their screen share will close uh, you know, by default. So these are the this is the other option that I wanted to show you. Now, a um, lot of people also asked in the survey, you know, how to use whiteboard. So um, what I'll do is now I'll show you how to use whiteboard. So to use whiteboard, what he, what you have to do is you have to click on screen share. Whiteboards are available within the screen share function or option. So once you click on screen share, because I'm using two screens, I've got a laptop and I've got a monitor. So you can see desktop one and desktop two, and there's this whiteboard thingy. So you click on whiteboard, or before I did whiteboard, there's another function that I wanted to show you. If you wanted your computer sound to play, if you're playing a sound, say a video, make sure that this is ticked. And you also tick this, optimize a screen share for video clip. So if you're sharing a video clip, if you're playing audio, then make sure that these are ticked. These are within, screen share. So again, click on screen share. So this screen up here. So at the bottom of the screen share option are sharing computer screen, number one. Number two is optimizing a screen share for video clips. And whiteboard is here. Now you click whiteboard and you share the screen. Can I ask if you can see my whiteboard? Good, right. So again, to be able to yes. use whiteboard, you need to Earlier in the settings, I said you, you know, I prefer having the annotation on. So I, you know, make sure that the annotation is on. You can actually control annotation from here. So you will keep the, you know, whiteboard. So once the whiteboard is, uh, you know, shared, so this white screen appears uh, from the bottom of the screen here. Let me, sorry. Uh, what I'll do is spotlight. Okay. Um, this one, it's not working fine. So here, you know, it's not completely working fine. Okay, so this plus button tells that, uh, you know, um, enables you to add multiple white pages, you know, white screen pages if you want, and you can always save them from here. So this is the save button. Um, now, how do you use whiteboard is, you go into more option from this toolbar, go to more, and right now, I've just gone and, you know, disable the attendee annotation. So what I'll do is I'll enable attendee annotation. Now my students can annotate while I'm, you know, uh, working as well. So see, I've got another laptop. I was telling you that I've got two, you know, um, uh, you know, devices. So I was working on another devices. So oh, da, 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 da. it's I think it's frozen a bit. Okay, let me stop share again and let maybe share screen and whiteboard and share. Okay, so I'm just telling how to do it. So um, if you click on more, there's another option as well. So names of annotators, make sure that this has been clicked. So you can see who writes. So if I write here anything, uh, the option, I'll click here and I'll annotate in my test function and I'll type test, testing, testing, please. Um, Da, 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 da. It's not coming up. Uh, maybe sorry, it's not working fine. But you can actually. This is what it does. Yeah. I, I just want to say uh, we have about 10, 12 minutes. Left. All right. So yeah. I'll I'll cut this up and show how to do breakout rooms. I just need two more minutes. So if I do, if you do text, you can write here. Uh, you can draw. 
you know, click here um, if you want a free freehand draw drawing. So this is what you do. Uh, you can erase. A spotlight is in a highlighter, um, and you can actually erase, you know, anything that you have here. And at the end of it, uh, at the end of the session, click save, and you just need to press save, and it gets saved automatically. And it, it gives you, an, uh, you know, a little notification saying that so in finder, so in folder. So you can see if you click on the so in folder button, you can see where it's been saved. So this is about uh, whiteboard. And actually whiteboard can also be used during breakout session, which was the, you know, uh, question, most asked questions in the survey. So to enable breakout room, you need to obviously switch it on in the, um, you know, settings. Uh, I'll... Sorry. Right. Okay. So breakout rooms. Click on breakout rooms, uh, and what it does is you actually receive two, you know, options. Uh, so there are three participants. So you can, you know, ask the system to auto create the breakout rooms and automatically assign people to different breakout rooms, or you can do it manually. So I prefer doing it, you know, automatically. I've told the system that I want people to be in two breakout rooms because there are only two participants. So I press here, create breakout rooms, and I go to options. I click on options again. Once you've done create breakout room, go to options and tell the system that you want to move all participants into breakout rooms automatically. So participants don't need to say, I want to join this breakout room. If you, you know, if you don't enable this, then that thing, that function becomes you know, um, that, that switched on by default. So what I do is I can set up time, I can set countdown, countdown timer, and what I do is now, once this has been done, you just, all you do is, you see test two go, is going to breakout room one, test, test one, sorry, test two, test one is going to breakout room two. So I open all rooms, and you see that, uh, you know, not join and join, so both people have joined now. If they have not gone into breakout rooms, you'll see not joined. Earlier there was, you know, this little grid uh, and in parentheses, you know, not joined uh, message. Now they have, they have gone into different breakout rooms. You are in the main room. So how do you go to breakout room? So I go to breakout room one now, with, and the student is test two. I click on join and I go to breakout room. So it's taking me to breakout room C, joining breakout room. And now I'm with test two student. Now actually test one can you know ask you a question. So test one might say, sir, I need help. So how you move between you know different breakout room is uh, test one. I can actually sorry I'm on a mobile phone. Uh, oh okay sorry I'm I'm with test two already. So test one can actually ask for help. Give me a second. Ask for help. So. They can ask for help, and you, if you click on breakout rooms, you'll see that you are with test two. Uh, you'll receive a message. Sorry, I received a message, but you didn't see it. Um, it came to now the screen and it disappeared. Now I want to go to test, you know, breakout room two where test one is there. So I go, I press, I simply press join, and again it tells me the system tells me that I'm going into breakout rooms because I'm using two screens, so it pushes to another screen by default. Now I'm in breakout room two. So at the top where my mouse cursor is, you can see that it's breakout room two. See here, breakout room two. Right, and now I wanna leave the breakout room and I want all the students to come back out of the breakout room. I click in the, you know, close all rooms. And if you wanna send message to your students in the breakout room, see here, broadcast a message to all, click here, then you, a text field appears. You can write, how are you all doing? We have, one minute left for the discussion. Now, broadcast. So what happens is I can see that in my two other devices, the message has already come through because I'm, you know, I, I'm testing it. And now I'll close the close the rooms and I'll say return to main, main session. So when you return to main session, what happens is um, if students um, usually you set up that in the setting, you, you told the system that you want to give 15 minutes buffer, so you have a 15 minutes lag. See, in the participants, it's only me. Now, test one has come back. Test two will come back as well in a while because it takes a bit of time. Um, okay, so because my I'm using mobile, so it's 
playing up playing up a bit. So you see the students come back here. Test two. Uh, raise hand. Okay, sorry, it's not coming back. Right. Okay, my mobile is not working fine. Anyway, so uh, the meeting is on. Okay, so test two is back here as well. So it was, I just wanted to make sure that you know I'm telling you right thing. So both the students have come back, but there's always a lag. So if you have 50 students, it can take up to you know uh, one minute. All right, so this is about breakout rooms. Um, I think that's all about it. Uh, I'll just go back to the slide again. Um, present. So we talked about how to detect source of noise, controlling mute, unmute, allowing restricting screen share, uh, enabling disabling annotations, sharing using saving whiteboard, and creating breakout rooms, moving between different breakout rooms, moving students to different breakout rooms. So actually, uh, we didn't do that. I could show you how to do do that if we have time. But if you click on breakout rooms, you can actually move students to do different breakout rooms. You'll see that function, you know, from where I joined to different breakout rooms. And right, okay. So that's all about it. Uh, now up to okay. Um, before I hand over to Kamini, I've got a few things. So a lot of people also asked in the survey how they can live stream their meetings. Uh, you need to have a paid account for that. Uh, you can't otherwise, you know, live stream your uh, meetings on Facebook or on, on YouTube. Uh, sending notifications uh, in the settings, uh, there's a button for, you know, reminder, enable it. Uh, just look for the all the options in the settings in the basic and advanced. Sending videos, uh, if you have recorded your videos, uh, my advice is upload to YouTube, make it unlisted. Now, if you don't know how to do that, maybe Google, and you know, share the YouTube link so that students can see your video. And YouTube is good because it requires low bandwidth. Uh, security concerns, we talked about the settings and I did talk about a lot of security concerns and also Kamini will talk about them in a while. And teaching you using video platforms, you know, make sure that you use whiteboard annotations and breakout rooms. I think that will be very, very helpful. Uh, thank you Kamini, now over to you. Thank you, Suman, for such a detailed uh, introduction to all of those features. Uh, really useful. Now, as teachers, I mean, given that we've had to adapt so suddenly because of COVID-19, um, we are trying to manage technology and we are also trying to focus on, you know, delivering a good lesson where we meet the lesson outcomes. What is it that I want to achieve, my students should achieve by the end of the lesson. That is at the top as always. So it is always pedagogy before technology. In simple words, it means we might like a platform, we might like the feature of breakout rooms or polls, and we might want to try it. But is it actually helping you achieve the lesson aims? So the question you need to ask is, please, see if that activity needs complicated technology or you could do it in a simple fashion because it's by the end of the day students being able to learn something and not just learn about a new feature of technology that's a question you need to ask make a plan before your class as you know while uh, Suman was taking you through all of these features, it, it takes time. Similarly, in your lesson, plan your lesson in chunks. Keep it simple. Plan short activities because even a short activity which you think will take five minutes will probably take 12. So keep that in mind. Understand, I mean, you know your students the best. How is it that you can bring that interaction in that virtual classroom so uh, chat function uh, what I meant was it has to be disabled privately chat is a great function because that allows all the students to contribute even while they're not speaking so have that on but look at various ways of changing interaction patterns in your classroom so that everybody contributes set clear ground rules which means what is the online behavior code of conduct, dress code, for example, and interaction. And if they defy it, what is it that, um, you know, what are the consequences of it? So they need to 
uh, the students need to know that. Uh, just like in a classroom, we have a class contract. Uh, we stick it on the board. What are the students going to do? What is the teacher going to do? Similarly, it applies in a virtual classroom. And of course, all the security measures that Suman spoke to you about are at play. Certainly do a mock lesson if possible. And because that will help you uh, looking at the time. Are you overboard? Any technology uh, that is not working well? All that is great, but always, always have a plan B because things can go wrong. Yeah, so that that's what I'd like to uh, say. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, and all of these features we've just discussed and about recording meetings. You if you are teaching young learners, you have to have parental permission because imagine if somebody catches hold of the recording, which is also saved on the cloud and they could use it for whatever purpose. So that has to be at uh, considered really, really seriously. You can't just record uh, somebody without their permission. And in case of young learners, the permission has to be sought from the parents. And I hope by the end of this session, we are towards, I mean, just about to finish. I hope you take away a lot as far as when it comes to using a virtual uh, video conferencing platform and the security measures that are at play here. Uh, of course, you'll be able to see the recording of the session tomorrow in case something was unclear and you'd be able to revisit it. Um, I now um, hand it over to all the participants. I mean, please uh, either type your question in the chat box or unmute yourself, but ensure that everybody's if somebody's speaking, then please wait for your turn. So we have about five minutes for questions. If any questions are there, we'd be happy to answer. So young learners means uh, young learners who are below the age of 16 are young learners. Uh, Kami, just to add to that, if you are, you know, uh, running Zoom lessons with your you know, high school students, um, mm. seek parental permission in the first place. Also, what I see is yeah. there's a trend in people to screen capture, screenshot, you know, with the students' faces and names and sharing those on uh, Facebook platforms. Yeah. I don't recommend it. It's completely unethical. Don't do it. And it's also it yeah. also harms. Uh, maybe it puts your lesson, your Zoom lesson on, you know, at risk. Yeah. Yeah, because pictures on platforms like Facebook, Twitter, they, you can never delete them. They will always be there. And uh, who who uses them for what purpose? You really don't know. Mm -hmm. Any any other questions? Um, hi, Kamini. Brother, so would you want to share on... the questions that you had taken up? Yes, so I'm just going to read out some of the questions that I've taken sure, note of. Sure, sure. Um, I think um, a lot of them are um, worried about the security issues of, of Zoom. Um, so they're ask, asking you to discuss uh, more about the security issues um, and about the privacy as well. And um, they're also asking if Zoom is secure. Uh, and one of them has also raised how will they be able to know that uh, their account has been hacked in Zoom. OK, I'll start and Suman, you can contribute from with my limited knowledge. There OK, so, OK, so the first thing to do is have the waiting room option on so that you know that no unknown person is coming to your class. Uh, nicknames, not a not a good idea full name so that you can recognize the student. Second, lock the meeting. The other thing is no screenshots of the classroom. Uh, no, no recording of the of the session and then sh being shared with whoever. All that is not a great idea. Um, there was one other thing I was thinking of. I forget. Uh, over to you. I'll, it'll come back to me. Suman. Um. The other thing that I've seen teachers doing is, you know, or um, say if there are organizations, organizations that are doing Zoom meetings, I've seen a growing trend of people sharing their meeting IDs and passwords on Facebook. Yes. If you have a password and you share it on Facebook, uh, there's no point of, you know, uh, you know, uh, putting a password in your meeting. 
uh, you what you do is if you'd like more people to join, share the link, but you know pass the password to only those people who actually commit to come to the meeting. So yeah. that's one that's the other thing to do. Uh, enable waiting room, obviously. Uh, and also, you know, maybe, um, yeah, I think uh, that's the thing to do. Uh, now, to answer your question, how do you know that, or how do I know that, you know, my Zoom has been hacked, is if there are, you know, unwanted people in your Zoom meetings during your class, then you know that your Zoom account has been hacked. Otherwise, it should be fine. Uh, shall I ask you a question, Suman, sir? Yes, yes. please. Uh, so I want to know about poll, though I tried a lot from different tutorials. Can we uh, create poll by unpaid account? Or free uh, sorry, account? Uh, no, I'm sorry. No. Unfortunately, you can't have poll account, uh, sorry, polls in your Zoom uh, if you have an unpaid account. It's okay. for that reason. Yep. Well, that is why, though I tried, I could not. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. It's not a feature. It's only a feature for a licensed account. Oh. Yeah. Can you use Mentimeter there? Sorry? sorry? Can you use Mentimeter there? Um, sorry, look, you know, uh, I think you can use Mentimeter. Mentimeter also gives you a free account. Uh, but what you do is uh, you can't embed Mentimeter in Zoom. You share the link of Menti with your students and your students go to menti.com and, you know, answer your question. Yeah. Okay, um, I'd like to add okay. up one question. Yes. So what procedures are we supposed to follow to have a paid account, sir? Um, you need to have a dollar account if you are located in Nepal and, you know, and pay the money. So I think the basic account is $20 per month, uh, which gives you 100 participants, uh, you know, uh, in, in each meeting. And you get 1 GB cloud storage for that. Okay, just for the sake of clarity, could I please just request all the participants to switch off your videos? And you, if you could please have your uh, uh, questions on the chat box, it would be much easier for us to answer as well. Thank you. Uh, we have Usa but, uh, you know, who is raising hand. Probably she has a question. Usa. Uh, yes, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I have created a Zoom meeting room for myself uh, yeah. for teaching purpose. But when I um, sign in from my laptop, uh, it gives me uh, another uh, Zoom um, meeting ID. So I want all in all, one in all devices. Can, is it possible? Uh, okay, so what you're saying is you've got, you know, you probably have multiple accounts, so you probably logging into a different account used, you know, uh, from your laptop. So that might be the reason why. No, I have used the same um, Google account to log in, but it is giving me two meeting room ID. Um, sorry, you know, I've really no idea about the technical glitch. So because we are not the technical person, <laughs> I'm, I'm an, you know, I'm a teacher like you. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying and trying, you know, like it, it is giving me two maybe, room, two uh, password. Look, uh, maybe you know, seek help locally. Uh, if you are really struggling, maybe, you know, send me um, or send somebody who has knowledge, you know, um, an and email so they can probably render the help. OK, sure. Thank you. OK, we have another question um, about breakout rooms. Um, is it available in the? basic Zoom plan and yes. also how to extend time in Zoom. Um, sorry, what about time? How can you extend the time? You can't well, you actually. Can't no, you, you can't. can't. So you'll have to, once the meeting finishes, you'll have to click on the same link to go back and start a new meeting with the same participants. So the unlimited time is not there. Having said that, during COVID period, they have taken away the, the limit on the time, but I'm not sure if it still is for free for unlimited time. Maybe, maybe not. Which one? Sorry. Zoom. Zoom. Oh, Zoom is, is it is still 40 minutes. Yeah, but for a little bit, as yeah. when the pandemic started, they'd extended it. Yeah. Can I ask one very simple question? Yes, sir. Uh, how, how do we deal with uh, places where the connectivity of the internet is very low? It's a very simple question, but important. Yes. Yes. 
Thank so you. you can Sorry. ask you can ask the participants to turn off the video because that takes a lot of bandwidth. When you turn off the video, just like you people have right now, you can still see what's happening on the screen. You can still see the teacher. You can see the presentation. You can see the whiteboard. So that if all participants turn off their video, it works as effectively. So mm. I think that's one easy way. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank okay, you, so I think we have time that's for our final well, question. Well, um, I, I have. Uh, Marvel, Marvel, if your hand raised, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. So I just have this question. I have been um, uh, having a lot of Zoom meetings. It's funny that sometimes my meetings don't end in forty minutes. I don't have a paid account. It just goes on. How does that happen? Uh, because sorry. yeah. <laughs> because uh, when the pandemic started, Zoom extend. It gave a no limit. That, there was no limit to the time, even for free accounts. Okay. Now they've got it back. So that's why you you did nothing. They were being generous. <laughs> yeah, even now, for that matter, even now I'm having Zoom so, sessions every day and sometimes are, it just... You are lucky. Wait okay. till it goes away. That's good. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. So, I think... Um, We've finished our Q&A due to time constraint. I'm afraid we'll have to end. Um, uh, could I please hand over to Motikala Ma'am to say a few final words? Thank you, uh, Radha. So, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Larry and Ms. Tanejara for your valuable and essential sharing on basics of remote delivery using online teaching meeting platforms with the theme of integrating ICT. It was a great sharing in detail on how to schedule and conduct video conferences, trainings, workshops through apps. It was very informative and relevant to the present context when the whole world is in lockdown and we are obliged to do virtual teaching learning through the various apps. You clearly pointed out the pros and cons of its use, such as code of conducts and their consequences and security. Your tips are helpful to use Zoom effectively for the classroom. We are very much enlightened from the organizer's side. I would like to express our sincere gratitude to both presenters and congratulate for your effort and hard work in providing your precious time. We ask our apology for the inconvenience caused during the presentation. And also, I would like to thank all the participants for your interactive participation and patience. See you in the next webinar on 25th May. Please stay safe and be at home. Thank you very much. Thank you so much and uh, good luck with your teaching and meetings. See you around. Thanks Thank so much. You Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.